Happy Thumbs Gaming. Week show. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming. Today we're checking out Free Play Level 7 Taming Gollum for LEGO Lord of the Rings. Alright, so there are no new requirements for this level other than what we've already showed you. So you should be good to go. So we'll select our characters and we'll head off. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, to the yeah. We're getting chased by a Schmeekeldorf. Oh, that's so cute. He's got his little teddy bear. You know? All right, so this has been one of the most humiliating parts of the game so far for me. Uh, I did actually do a, a hard edit and just cut out about 10 minutes worth of ridiculousness. Uh, and, and what I'm getting at here is, is that here, right here on this corner right here, there is a puzzle. And as I've already stated in the previous levels, I cannot do them. I have the hardest time being able to control these blocks. And again, I'm not trying to blame TT Games or any kind of development issues. It's 100% user error, I'm sure. Um, but I thought I was going to cut some corners here and actually just knock the blue and the red bricks right away. But the goal here is to build the bricks just as you see them there. And it literally took me 15 minutes to do it right. So hopefully it won't take you guys as long. And uh, just to show that we did it right, we go ahead and uh, fast forward as you saw there. So... So once you get that complete and you climb to the top of the stairs, we're going to switch to Berserker. I still do not, for the life of me, understand how to control this guy's bombs either. I mean, I press one way and they go the other. I hold the button down and try to target something and they go wherever they want to. So kind of random there. Now, this level was kind of a nightmare for me as far as displaying stuff, and I apologize for the switching back and forth. It was not intended to be this way, but there are a couple situations where I clearly uh, have the wrong character selected, but have the character open as the other character, so I'm switching back and forth rather than switching to the character. So I'm not sure why sometimes it allows you to have two characters on the screen at the same time, and other times it makes you switch to the other person. I'm sure it's just the process of how you pull the character up, but uh, regardless, I was not successful in that. So once you uh, bust open those bricks, slide through, and grab the mini kit with a little guy through that hobbit hole, you'll slide right around the corner and use Lego Loss. Now here's where it gets even uglier. So basically, this is where I was talking about where I keep switching to the guy I need, but I, I, I just not having any success. So I, I thought I could be smart here. Since Frodo's over there and I have Fro a couple Frodo's, I figured I'd switch to Frodo at the Shire. No such luck. Unfortunately, you have to switch away from Frodo over in the Gollum area and then switch back to your other character and switch to the main Frodo in this area, which will then allow you to use the light and get in there. Now, I'm sure it's possible. Other guys may find another way to do that. However, I failed, so... My bad. Let's get a good chuckle out of my experience, and hopefully you guys will do it the easy way, and uh, we'll move right along. So, dumping down on this left side before you advance up those hills. So, uh, you know, you basically want to do this right away. Pull that orange handle, and after a quick little woo-ha, we'll see the snowman pop up. Punch that snowman right in the face. Pow! Right in the kisser. And go ahead and grab that nice little mask. This actually happens to be one of my favorite masks of the game. Go ahead and use those uh, handrails to pull yourself up. Once we get about halfway up, we're going to smash open that Morgul brick with uh, old Aragorn. And then we'll use Sam to plant this giant flower and get this mini kit that we saw on our first walkthrough that we were baffled on how we could get it. Then we'll go ahead and punch that and climb to the top of the stairs, go through a crazy fast fighting scene because uh, that's how we roll. Doing a little bit of... Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure Gandalf had at least three Red Bulls and a Rockstar before doing this. There may have been some powder drugs available as well, but uh, regardless, he has uh, completed his jump rope club here. And, oh, back to the jump rope club. Apparently, it's a bi-weekly meeting. We'll go ahead and uh, double dutch over that. Go ahead and blast him off the hill. And then it'll take us over to the other side where we're going to do the most damage. So, obviously, you need to obtain the six fish here. Um, but more importantly, we're going to focus on the mini kits and everything else. So, off to the very left side there, as you just saw, we smashed a giant skeleton. And here's the second one. There are four of these in total. And we're going to go ahead and smash all four to earn ourselves a nice little mini kit there. Three of them are right off the bat, right here in your face. One of them is a little bit further down. So, there we go. We got three of those knocked out. Then we're going to go ahead and switch on over to Aragorn after we stud hoard up for a second. 
And then we're going to destroy those Morgul bricks and switch back to Frodo, the Dodo, and use our light to get in there. Too bad all these guys don't have like a cell phone with like a LED light app or something because then it would be a lot easier to just slide in there and snag that. So we grab the mini kit. We're going to come out front and use Sam to dig this flower up. Now, there are two giant purple flowers that Sam will grow in this area. And you'll see here in about three, two, one, in the middle there, a target will appear. So we're going to go ahead and use our bow or Legolas to go ahead and open that. But before we do it, we're going to revisit this little hobbit hole here that we can use Sam's elven rope to pull and uh, get in there and get ourselves a mini kit. However, we already grabbed that mini kit, so we are going to get the purple stud, or blue stud, actually. My bad. My colors are apparently off or something, because it looked purple to me, but I know that was only a blue. That was a bluesy. All right, so we're getting our fish. We're going to go ahead and toss a couple of them in so our inventory isn't full, because that can happen, and it's a pain in the arse. And now we'll go ahead and actually shoot the target, since we kind of neglected to do that a minute ago. And there you saw one of two. Then we'll push this on over, speed it up, da -da -da, cha -ta, cha -ta, cha -ta. destroy everything, start hoard up. And as you can see, we did not achieve the true adventure status in our first playthrough. And as a reminder, uh, according to our math, it is 88,000 studs. So we will, uh, I, th I don't think we actually got it this playthrough either. I think we're going to have to have some sort of a multiplier for it because... We even had some items that we'd already recovered, and we're getting thousands and ten thousand studs for it. Woohoo! There we go, third treasure item. So we are good to go there, sirs. Well, and madams. Now, a little side note: it is possible, highly unlikely, and maybe impossible, but you should already have the third treasure. That was actually only the second treasure we've obtained in this video, but it is the third treasure that you should have, and you should have it due to the fact that at the end of this level, you have to build a fishing pole to beat Gollum. So, and that should be your third treasure. Now, right after we fall down from above, we're going to smash that little hole with either the axe that we've concocted with our mithril bricks or Gimli. Gimli was the easier choice for us, so we went ahead and used him. As you can see, Sam just built another flower with another one of those targets. And right off to the right-hand side there, you can also see another skeleton that we are smashing down now. By the powers of Grayskull, Skeletor down. I don't know. I just try to, try to add a Tahiman reference there. I think I failed. You guys feel free to tell me. And I apologize. I know that I've upset some of you. Woo, minikit. With the uh, my mispronunciations of some of these. I've been working on it. And the more you tell me, the more I correct it. So uh, hopefully I will uh, pronounce everything correct. I know I was saying Isengard, Isengard. I fixed that. Uh, you know, if there's something else that I need to fix, please tell me. I'm... I'm Totally not perfect, and I'm willing to make some changes for the better. So if you got something that you think is a good suggestion for us, drop it like it's hot in the comment box. We'll read it and respond, and uh, we'll go from there. So here we go. Right off the bat, you're going to want to fall towards the screen. So run away from Gollum and smash these silver, but not mithril objects. You can just destroy them with any sword. And as you can see there, a mini kit will fall and put it together, and you'll grab it. More than likely, you grabbed it on your first playthrough like we did, so that's why we don't actually get a mini kit there. We get the So here in a minute, we actually have some major problems, but before we get distracted, this was kind of an issue here too. You obviously need Frodo and his light to get into the cave, but then once you're in the cave, you need to destroy those silver mithril objects. So we just went crazy throwing those uh, bombs in there with Berserker, and sure enough, we actually got in there and was able to get into this little secret passage. Now, here again, this was another one of those moments. This level was just, uh, I apologize again. Normally, we are very methodical, and we do a pretty good job, but sometimes, every once in a while, I fail. And uh, so, this one, I didn't quite get the hint that you actually need to put Gollum on the turning blocks up there on the wall. So, uh, there's two switches, and there are two blocks of the wall that move. Gollum will return to you if you are playing single player. He will follow. He will jump off that wall and follow you before you can even switch what you need unless he is directly on the object that's moving. So first of all, we need to go up onto the left side and grab that handle. I guess the order of which you do it is not as not that important. But we do the left side, and then we totally screw up and throw the stupid handle on the ground, and then I have to go back up there again. As you can see, it just respawned up there. But, you know, the goal here is just to get Gollum 
on that spinning block like you just saw there and then traipse down and go ahead and get the items. Obviously, I smashed all those items down below and now I can build some stuff up, but I need that handle. So I'm going to need to go do the handle again. So this time, you can see the hair. You get on the spot that moves and then move it. And then you can get on over there, get that handle, crank it, and yep, you guessed it. Mini kit. You can see it flashing there. So that was our 10th mini kit. Now, um, there definitely is no other available mini kit. So you should have them all by now. And uh, we did get the last treasure uh, on our first playthrough. So you can see right here, this is what I was talking about, how I was glitched out. The rope required to make the fishing rod somehow gets stuck on the ground and then attached to my character. No matter which character I am, no matter what button I pressed or how I went about moving with the character, this rope was just totally flapping around, as you can see on the ground, whether I'm moving or not, and I was literally tethered to the ground. Um, I tried dying, I tried switching, I tried building, I tried all these different things, and nothing worked. So in the end, I ended up just pulling out my fishing rod. As you can see, I got dual-wielding fishing rods there. And uh, I went and fished out the fish required to, to throw it at him and get that final blast in his face. So hopefully you don't have to go through that ridiculousness. And uh, if there is a consistency with that, hopefully uh, there will be a patch out sooner than later for it. So far, this has been the most dramatic level and most frustrating for me. Hopefully, I did a well enough job uh, milking this footage together so that you can get a good idea where everything's at. I think, all in all, the job was pretty complete. As you can see here, we did get all 10 mini kits, and we did get the blacksmith design, and we got all three treasure items, only due to the fact that we got the fishing pole built on our first run through. So, there you can see the design for the carrot bow. And, um, yeah, I'm not too excited about a carrot bow. Zucchini bow? Maybe. Not a carrot bow. All right. That's going to go ahead and wrap up LEGO Lord of the Rings Level 7 Taming Golem Free Play. Hopefully I got all my words pronounced correctly because the video footage wasn't our best. Uh, all in all, it was more more shame in my having to do some some hard edits. I don't like editing hard stuff. I like soft edits. Anyways... All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Feel free to comment, vote, subscribe if you like what we're doing. Head on over to Twitter, tell your friends, and as always, until next time.